What is up guys, Wrestling Premiere is here. Man, it's about damn time. So it's been 11 months since I last uploaded that Return of DX video. This one's been delayed numerous times because it's one of my favorites, and even though I didn't have cable for a short time back in 2006, DX are probably my second or third favorite wrestlers. I used to watch the Unforgiven 2006 DVD all the time, went on WWE.com to see what's up, and whatever I think of this iteration of the group, it brings back a bunch of memories. I even had a DX poster thinking I was cool when I clearly wasn't. You guys already know I'm fond of the time, you know, 2006, but let's not waste the time here. For several years, fans had wanted to see these two have another run, and by the time DX was back, Triple H had went from mid Carter to certified main eventer, so they were on equal ground compared to 97-98. Kayfabe wise, they had already settled their issues inside Hell in a Cell, so there was no animosity between the two, and one thing the duel had in common was the hatred of the McMahons. They were reigning terror over both men in numerous ways, and Mr. McMahon prided himself in being respected, and he'd go so far to receive it. To McMahon, it's getting on your knees and kissing his ass. Shane was there for the ride, and while he was a lesser evil of the two, he completely supported his father's actions, except for the products of Semen promo. And the church incident. The X were formed because of their hatred for the McMahon, simply put. Triple H's face turn was a long, and I mean long time coming, as the fans got tired of hating on him that they started cheering him. Of course, this was in part due to John Cena, but following this, there was no way he could continue being a heel. Even after assaulting a referee, Triple H was receiving adulation and love from the crowd, and there was no turning back. HBK, well, he was HBK. It was mostly laid back, but when the McMahons breathing down his neck was way more intense than usual. On the heels of Vengeance and Charlotte, the McMahons quickly wanted to eradicate any possibility of a DX run. Since the squad couldn't get the job done, instead the job into DX, Shane O'Mac revealed that himself and father Vince will face DX tonight. Fast forward to the top of the hour, and Mr. McHunter appeared. He's all angry at the man, and they cut his music and discussed the match for tonight, and Mick Hunter mentioned how Shawn Michaels beat his ass at WrestleMania, and even said that it's more embarrassing than the XFL. Oh man, that was rough. Then the game began mentioning a bunch of dicks. He was really pushing the buttons there, you know, saying, I love dicks, big ones, small ones. And then Sean O'Mac made a sudden appearance. He's talking about stuff, but at the same time, couldn't help himself but to do that little dance. He mentioned how he's gonna inherit this company, and Mick Hunter responded, saying, He's leaving it to his daughter and that man who's got a bazooka of a Richard. Shane continued dancing so McMahon's like, STOP IT! Since his son was overshadowing him, Mick Hunter felt the need to stand back and there's the greatest moment in WWF history. Their party would soon be spoiled when the imposters appeared. Vince had enough of the DX fun and was ready to beat the crap out of them. Hell, he even brought in some quote-unquote observers. All of a sudden, a random porta potty emerged and Vince is like, what is that? And Triple H responds, you're full of crap, in December to this member 2006 descended upon them. And Shawn Michaels reminded everybody that if they're not down with DX, they've got two words. Okay, this is one memorable moment, this segment in itself. Like when you say DX 2006, this is one of the first things they think of, and with good reason. You know, some of the stuff they were doing was absolutely hilarious. You know, like the staff is that, well, that was funny. They're really pissing off the McMahon's cafe wise, and it made for some entertaining moments. In light of DX's actions, they were barred from the building the following week. Despite the fact that they weren't even in the arena, the crowd gave them a ridiculous reaction. McMahon barred them six days earlier, and Coach was the bearer of bad news. They were kinda sad, but that frown turned upside down, and they left. Coach was happy to give this news to Vince, who never seemed to realize that they were gonna have Raw on the outside. You know, Vince knew what's up. He saw that nobody's in the building, in the hallways, and Coach thought it was because of 4th of July, and McMahon's worst suspicion came true. DX were having a barbecue on the outside. You had McMahon-sized wieners, DX-sized how Mr. Fuji was even there, according to Triple H, of course. He was getting sucked off at one point to top it all off. DX entered the production truck. They bribed one of the guys and Michaels was like a child pushing all the buttons and one button itself even crashed the feed. Upon noticing this, the coach tried telling McMahon but he didn't give a damn. Meanwhile, DX was like, go to camera 10, and there we discover that boss pissing, and it led to a very embarrassing moment for the coach who finally relayed what's up. Because of this, McMahon made his way to the arena to whine and complain about Degeneration X. He didn't care about the barbecue stuff, but after interfering in the television production of the show, he's gonna, well, we didn't know what he was gonna do because DX was messing with the microphones. McMahon turned into a chipmunk by the sounds of it, and Jerry Lawler was laughing his ass off. Like, nobody could take this man seriously at all. At one point, he even sounded like Darth Vader, and following this, it seemed like everything 
was good, but the sound effects came into play. Video effects as well, and there's the famous I Love Cox thing. You Love Cox chant intensifies, and McMahon felt completely embarrassed with this whole ordeal. Suddenly, Triple H played a video package highlighting the incident from the previous week, all while McMahon had that death stare. You know, he's ready to destroy somebody. Meanwhile, Coach was off to some serious business trying to get rid of DX, and he failed miserably. And McMahon, he was promising DX was going to get it on Saturday night's main event because they were facing the Spear Squad again, but in an elimination match. He was all smiling, thinking about July 15th, but DX thought it was a complete and utter joke. He just wanted to leave at this point and respectfully played his music. His music, alright, but not the one he wanted, you know, they played stand back. He had enough of this high school-like environment and was ready to leave. Of course, that wasn't going to be easy because DX blew up some fireworks inside the damn limousine and McMahon emerged in DX colors. So basically, more of the story, don't keep DX out. Since Vince was seething like a Mavericks fan at the time, he decided to let out all that anger and frustration on poor Eugene. He was of course a huge fan of DX and enjoyed what he saw and heard last week, and so he booked him in a match with himself. With regards to that, well first of all, the McMahons knew damn well that DX was coming. They just didn't know when. So, they wanted to use Eugene as a way to goad them out to the ring, and they accepted his apology by gifting him some DX merch. Oh, and they poured some green paint on him. Also, this episode wasn't already wild. This occurred the same night. But with that said, the main event, yeah, it was the main event. DX were nowhere to be found. The squad came out, got some training in for Saturday, and this is when D-Generation X finally appeared. JR was the most excited person in the world, and that's saying something. And also, it occurred at the right time because Eugene was about to get slammed through a table. And McMahon was clearly intending to do something, so DX were well aware. He was trying to deploy a trap of sorts, and they clearly were not going to comply with that. He shot in some random code, you know, now, brown cow, whatever the hell it was. And by the time the net had descended, DX were far away, and if that wasn't bad enough, Eugene stole a win from under him. DX were lapping it up, and the loss was like leaving your controller to go out and do something. They were clearly not taking this entire thing seriously, and DX was even making jokes about that Spear Squad match the day of the show. Now about it, well, it was a clear annihilation of the squad. Last time around, they put in a decent performance, but here, <laughs> horrendous. This was despite the fact that McMahon at one point got involved. And if things were already bad, Michael super kicked the McMahon into the cage. So at this point in time, McMahon had never gotten the upper hand on DX. Ever since they reformed, the guys were essentially unstoppable. They were bulletproof. They were having fun plugging their merch, but it was all going to come to an end. In an effort to halt the momentum of the two, Shane McMahon demanded a match against the Heartbreak Kid. Both Triple H and Vince were at ringside for this one, and Shane looked pretty good out there despite being in there with one of the greats. Michael Slow got back into it, so McMahon interfered and the match was thrown away after the modern day job squad emerged. Triple H made an effort to save his buddy but failed, and for the first time in two months, the McMahon stood tall. Oh, actually, I spoke soon, and I literally mean this because I thought this was going to end the show. Turns out Triple H had the great equalizer, and they absolutely destroyed the squad's skulls, sending the two from Greenwich Run. The following week saw the DX and McMahon thing go on hold because because Stephanie gave birth. There was of course some tongue-in-cheek references to Triple H being there along with them, but the fun and games would return on the July 31st, 2006 episode of Raw. The McMahons came out all joyous because there was a new member in the family. A baby girl, that is. He confirmed a tag team match against DX for SummerSlam and said that the celebration will continue until then. Suddenly, their music plays with HBK said Mazel Tov, and Triple H corrected him saying that they're not Jewish for shouting lying. Michaels was proud that they've got a match at SummerSlam and didn't want to talk about it, opting to speak about the newest member of the McMahon family. He once again mentioned Triple H being in that hospital before saying that Triple H acquired the entire McMahon family scrapbook. He claimed that he's got the first ever photo of Vince McMahon and apologized for the lack of colors in the picture, and there he is. HVK even said that while there's no such thing as an ugly baby, that is an ugly baby. Hunter said that this photo was taken before Vince opened the Wipe My Ass Club, and then they decided to talk about Shane McMahon. They showed a picture of him with a silver spoon in his mouth, and Michaels even claimed that he swung the umbilical cord, and just look at how close Shane O'Mag was about to laugh. He was really about to burst out. With regards to the newborn, well, he was awesome, and Michaels felt that he looked familiar. Shane was at a loss of words and said the first thing on his mind, that being... Yeah, yeah, SummerSlam, we're gonna be the ones who change your diapers. DX obviously no sold that and continued talking. And as McMahon was like, play my music, they didn't give a damn. DX was like, no, 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 they're gonna play our music. And that goes to show just how petty the duo were. However, they wouldn't be laughing for long as the inclusion of Umaga into the storyline helped turn the tides. 
Also, one thing to mention is that the McMahons wanted a bunch of boxes filled with cigars, and it turns out they planted them in DX's locker room and the blame was placed on Triple H, so he was sent in for some questioning. The McMahons made it seem like they had no idea what's up with the cigars, and it also caught Adriki a bit off his game. And this wouldn't be a problem, but he was facing Umaga. As expected, the heartbreak kid put on a fight. He refused to back down in the face of adversity, but the McMahons did some shenanigans leading to an instant Samoan spike, giving the bulldozer a victory. They continued the attack afterwards, and Vince even won the hell out of Michaels with no Triple H in sight. Then, he announced that the game is facing Umaga next week, and at this point, they were finally getting a hold of DX. It took them nearly two months, but their plan was coming to fruition. In light of last week's actions, Shawn Michaels had been pacing around the McMahon office for a while, and they knew this, so Shane opted to verbally provoke him on the outside. He's like, oh, HVK, where are you? And as expected, HVK struck him, leading to his arrest because he accidentally assaulted an officer. Triple H was left alone in there with Umaga, and he really tried it, but again, McMahon's interfered and the game fell victim. To make matters worse, Triple H received a pedigree from Super Insane Vince. Before SummerSlam, both sides had one final confrontation. Shane, of course, had to brag about dominating DX over the last few weeks, and Vince claimed that their party's over, and so the fans responded saying, you love or suck, can't hear it, Cox. He praised the duo for being a big name group, but put over his last name huge. You know, you guys may be good, but McMahon, that last name is much bigger than both of you combined or whatever. Something along the lines of that. McMahon is flexing, you know. I have unlimited resources. I could bribe the police. I could have a raw guy on my side with a snap of my fingers. And he promised to bring down the wrath of Satan upon them at SummerSlam. Triple H quickly shut him up, reminding him just who they were facing. You know, it was HVK, Shawn Michaels, the showstopper. They were facing the game, the King of Kings Triple H. Those two combined, they're D-Generation X. Didn't matter what was thrown their way, Raw guys, doesn't matter. Saying himself, it don't matter. So that's the segment, you know, DX, they weren't they weren't showing any fear. Since Umaga was going to be a part of that tag match, DX opted to convince somebody else that they should lay waste to the Samoan Bulldozer. With regards to the match, I'm not sure what the sentiment is towards it. I assume it's polarizing, but I think with the talent involved, it was good enough. First of all, the Spear Squad came out and looked like a bunch of D-League talent. McMahon was eager to wrestle, but opted to bring in the Calvary, that being Mr. Kennedy, William Regal, and worst of all, Finley. And after getting their asses beat for a bit, DX was still looking for a fight. Enter the Big Show. Now, surely they were going to get destroyed, right? Triple H was getting jumped, Michaels was taking a beat down as one of the McMahons were spectators. To top it all off, Triple H was chokeslammed through a table, and after several minutes of carnage, the McMahons were ready to actually compete. And then the bell rings. It was a very one-sided affair and with good reason. The McMahons bent the rules, tagged in and out, worked as a unit paying homage to classic teams such as Demolition and the Heart Foundation, and best of all, they hit the Doomsday device and Jerry Lawler was just marveling over the fact that they were successfully hitting these moves. But at the same time, HVK was kicking out. He had this sudden burst of momentum and then he tags in Triple H, leading to the absolute dismantling of the McMahon family. Everything was going well for DX, but then Umaga entered the arena and he single-handedly took out both Triple H and HBK, and the fans thought it was it. Suddenly the pyro goes out and it's Kane and it was the first time he had been seen in about two months. Kane put a whooping on the Samoan bulldozer and in the ring Hunter kicked out of the pinfall attempt. McMahon got frustrated with the ref assaulting him and Shane went for a coast to coast but Michaels caught him with the super kick. Fans go crazy, Boss gets his ass beat leading to the super kick pedigree combo and DX was victorious. Simple story they told yet the crowd was entertained. It was textbook and it's entertaining for what it was in my eyes. Since the McMahons took a huge L they were seething as Especially Vince, this is before he even got news of an unfortunate accident. Now, the X in celebration of the victory at SummerSlam out to pay a visit to McMahon's private jet. HBK was eating sandwiches, Triple H was messing with the bathroom, and they weren't really aware of their surroundings. Or maybe they were and they just didn't give a damn. HBK couldn't believe this plane had all of this stuff and asked how much it cost, and it's revealed that it's worth 30 million. And Triple H was sarcastically saying that they shouldn't mess anything up. Hunter then made a big fuss over a minor scratch. HVK is all worried, but Triple H assured him that Vince won't notice such a thing because <laughs> they spray painted DX in the middle of it. Vince in the arena was damn near about to suffer a stroke, and he raged hard, and a few minutes later, he came out to the arena. McMahon was ready to retaliate against D-Generation X by having them arrested, but it turns out they weren't even at the airport. Why? Because they were at the headquarters. After bribing a security guard with some jelly donuts, DX managed to stand atop the WWE's world headquarters. They compared McMahon to historical figures, Triple H randomly said the Germans bombed Pearl Harbor, and HPK was confused. And this is when McMahon shouted, You're supposed to be at the airport, damn it! DX wanted to show everybody that they were leaving a mark in a huge way, and about that, well, they already did. They didn't really need to do this, but they did it anyways, and they vandalized the headquarters. Hell, a full moon even emerged atop the building. 
Vince was really looking like any minute could be his last, and throughout the night, he desperately tried to forget about DX, you know, he was lively, I'm talking about the Kiss My Ass Club, got McFoley to kiss his, but once he exited the building, it was a whole different story. He even went as far as to admit that DX had broken him, and that wasn't even the grand finale, because DX managed to jerk the axle off his limousine, and this sent McMahon over the edge, and to make matters worse, they sprayed DX on the limo, he began shotting and going insane as Raw went off the air. Things were so damn bad that he didn't even appear on the show the following week. Shane was dropping bars about how DX humiliated and vandalized Vince and his possessions, and Shane even said that DX ripped apart his father's heart. He couldn't celebrate his birthday because of them, and in an effort to end the duo, Shane announced that they're wrestling on Raw for the first time in 9 years. The opponents though were to be determined. A couple of teams were very interested in going after them, and Vince meanwhile was enjoying himself at the hotel. It seemed like he finally got past his DX nightmare, but then multiple cocks were brought into the arena, and he went insane again. Later that night, Shane barged into DX's locker room, and why is that guy looking at Triple H like he de pushed him or something? Also, that guy looks familiar. But anyways, McMahon had enough of the jokes, he felt that DX had gone to far and they should stop. So DX bounced back saying it's ironic because this is the same man whose father pulls his pants down, goes out with the girls one third of his age and does a bunch of stuff. DX even took the time to make a cheeky plug for the McMahon DVD and with regards to the main event, they had to face the Smackdown trio of Doom again. As expected they gave DX a hard time but it wasn't enough for the victory. Right afterwards Shane brought in the big show and JR was shocked that he was even in Atlantic City because of an ECW live event and it showed just how much resources McMahon had compared to DX. To make matters worse the Smackdown guys attacked once more and suddenly Vince's music plays and he's got a lead pipe in hand. He looked like a deranged soul constantly battering Triple H into a bloody heap. Michaels was blasted with a camera, choked out with a wire and never before had DX been brutalized like they were here. And Oddly enough, the crowd still found time to chant, you suck cock. McMahon was anything but satisfied with a beatdown because he announced that they were having a rematch, but the Big Show's on their side this time around, and it's gonna be hell in a cell. With the announcement and the total annihilation of DX, the old Mr. McMahon was back. Shane and Mafia boss came out with him as well, and they spoke about the systematic destruction of the group. Big Show said that their sophomore pranks were anything but funny, and tomorrow night, DX are gonna be left handicapped. Vince of course was the happiest camper of them all, he said that the fans were laughing when his headquarters were vandalized. When his axle was jerked off they were laughing, but he who laughs last, laughs loudest. As they're talking about Unforgiven, an emotionless DX emerged and they were a complete far cry from the aging fathers who were all about jokes. Triple H said that it's been a long time since somebody made them taste their own blood and because of that, they got two words, thank you. Thank you for reminding them just who the hell they are. Security once again tried getting involved, but I don't need to say it, they, they got killed. And so basically, the McMahons unlocked a whole different side to DX. You know, it had been a while since both men were these savage, heartless individuals, and it wasn't about jokes anymore, it was personal. In other places, McMahon was eyeing a potential match with Triple H and MSG, and this of course is after he faces Big Show on Tuesday. Well about that, DX of course looked so out of place on Tuesday night. And Big Show for context was built up as this fighting champion that took on any and every opponent that knocked on his door. It made for a pretty entertaining run because he was booked to his full potential, and guys like Ric Flair the Undertaker visited and tried to best the giant on his home turf. For some odd reason though, Heyman removed the extreme stipulation of the match, and both men really made Big Show feel like a big deal. It was a decent match, but of course it ended in a DQ and Hardcore Holly of all people interfered. DXL quickly bounced back to destroy the Bashams and send the heels running. Now, with regards to that MSG main event, McMahon for some reason felt as if he had a burden to honor his family and lineage. That's the entire reason the match was booked in the first place. Before it began, however, Cade and Murdoch decided to assist the McMahons in brutalizing DX and leaving Triple H a battered heap for the match. If that wasn't bad enough, the match was no holds barred. By the time Triple H walked down the ramp, he was wildly and barely aware of his surroundings. It was a one-sided affair, and to top it all off, McMahon even hit the pedigree, but in doing so, he unlocked the Triple H comeback. So Shane interfered. Sean runs in and makes a save, but Big Show ruins everything and Triple H tries bringing in the sledgehammer, but at this point he was too slow to do anything of importance. They are beaten and victimized, oh, and McMahon won. So the stage is set, D-Generation X reformed as a means to stick it to McMahon, who made both of their lives a living hell. Vince fails to stop him with a squad, so he takes matters into his own hands, and at the same time, DX was continuously pranking him in ways that either angered McMahon, depressed him, or flat out broke him. Since he was so broken at this point, he decides to take it up a step by drawing blood, and in doing so brought out the real side of HVK and Triple H. Alright, one thing to mention is that the cell was upgraded. It was bigger, much more durable compared to the old one. Now, with regards to the match, I like it, but don't take my word for it. I watched the Unforgiven DVD 
a million times. Did it last a bit too long? Yes, definitely, but you can't say it wasn't violent. For one, blood was already drawn within the first few minutes. Triple H was using a screwdriver to open up a wound, Shane's white jersey turned red, Big Show was at his best, kayfabe, and as time went on, the heels found themselves in control, and this was mostly due to the Big Show. DX was left a bloody heap and the match was all but over, but Vince did one of the stupidest things you can do in the match. Get arrogant. Because of this, he inadvertently opened up the DX floodgates and the match was so damn violent. Blood was drawn, everyone went through hell, and then McMahon opted to pull his pants down. To make matters worse, Big Show screwed up, Shane McMahon's neck ceased to exist, and Vince received a one-way trip to the moon, and this was after he realized that he was done, you know, he wasn't gonna beat DX, he was never gonna score a W over them. And to conclude the match, Triple H broke the sledgehammer over his back. I'll dive deep into the match in a future pay-per-view review, but to me, it encapsulated what this feud was all about. At times it was all jokes, but when it was brutal, it was dark as hell. Like that image of Shane McMahon uncontrollably shaking with blood streaming from his mouth has been stuck in my mind since 2006. The match is often polarizing, I mean the ass thing was pretty unnecessary, and as for Shane McMahon, he was actually interested in doing a crazy spot during this match. Here's what Triple H had to say about it. And I quote, We're putting together a Hell in a Cell match once with Sean and me against Vince and Shane in the Big Show. And Shane is the king of daredevils and we were putting together all these crazy spots and it's just bothering me. Vince was like, I can tell you don't like any of this. Why? It was because all we're doing is putting together a bunch of special effects and I said people paid a lot of money to see Sean and me stick your head up Big Show's ass. No, I didn't. But we're jumping off a cage, landing on tables. Why? And Vince said, you're right. Start over. They could fall off all that stuff that day, but it's not what they wanted to see, and it wasn't about the special effects, it was about the storyline. The cell spot certainly would have enhanced the match, but like Triple H said, it's unnecessary. What's odd about this interview is the fact that Vince didn't want that to happen, and instead wanted to have his head shoved in Big Show's ass. And also, I didn't want to see that, obviously, I don't want to see Big Show's ass in any circumstance. Okay, now that the Mega Man's finally understood that DX wasn't going to be stopped, the feud came to an end. Shawn Michaels even went as far as to say a part of him was gone with the feud ending. Obviously, it was all lies because they even wrote a poem in honor of Vince and the match. They said, quote unquote, Vince, you're upset, your concern is valid. After all, last night you tossed Big Show salad. We beat you up, you almost kicked the bucket, and if you're not down there, that, we got two words for you, suck it. Now that's the feud, uh, it, it was very entertaining, I had fun making this video, obviously, you could see it. Rated RKO, we gotta do that real soon, you know, I, I had to talk about that team and why they were awesome, why I hated them, you know, I despised them. But yeah, like DX, they, they had a very entertaining feud with the McMahon, and the whole point of this DX reunion, like the whole thing, the joke is that they're aging deads, that still think they're young. Like, that's how I see it, and that's what makes it better in my eyes. What did you guys think of the McMahon feud? Please comment down below, and that's it for this video. Make sure you hit a switching music on the like button, and perhaps the pedigree and the subscribe button. Peace, I'm out.